Greetings and welcome to your life. I am Laureen and today you'll be meeting a new friend of mine who is just inside this box. So stick around. You'll be glad you did. Do you ever look around at what's happening in the world? In your own house? or in the community and wonder, what the heck is going on? The word crazy doesn't even seem to suffice. Time, however, just keeps on ticking, doesn't it? There are days when I think that it sure would be nice to stop it so we could all just catch up and catch our breath a bit, you know? So on that note, I met a new friend a while back because his name just seemed to grab my attention. And I just finished reading it. It's written by a German economist by the name of E.F. Schumacher. He was born in 1911 and died when I was just five years old. But his perspective has an extremely modern relevance in my opinion. He is really most known for his book, Small is Beautiful, which is ranked in the top 100 most influential books ever written since World War II. But he also went on to write this book, A Guide for the Perplexed, that has at least a dozen different editions printed and been translated into multiple languages. It presents what one would say is a thinking outside of the box type of philosophy. My favorite quote from the book is this. It is not physical sleep that is the enemy of man. It is the drifting, wandering, shiftless moving of his attention that makes him incompetent, miserable, and less than fully human. This book opened my mind to a greater understanding of how man operates and how he relates to both the physical and invisible world. He introduced me to a term, philosophical maps, that he defines as the guide to which man navigates his journey of life. He also points out the flaws of man's following and interpreting those maps as well as the dangers of not including certain things on those maps. He reflects on and pulls from a variety of teachings throughout man's history, from Plato to the Bible, Dante and St. Thomas, even Descartes, Maslow, and Darwin. He doesn't just lay out the literal concepts, but points out their resulting consequences too, both positive and negative as well. By the way, did you know that if you had lived prior to the Renaissance era and Copernicus, the father of modern astrology, you most certainly would have been taught that the sun actually orbits the earth. Anyway, he highlights the importance of man's need to reach for spirituality as opposed to materialism, and his innate need to find purpose beyond his five senses. He also gives some rather pointed advice for all of us regarding the need for self-awareness, compassion, and altruism. As a person who spends a lot of time in contemplation, especially in regards to the whys and hows of this life, both personally and globally, I found this book to actually ease much of my confusion and shine a light on possibility thinking and my own personal potential. It seems like the goal of this book was to create a context from which all of us can raise the roof of our own goal setting, both individually and collectively, and inspire us to live a life of higher significance. I would say that he did it quite well. In fact, one of the reviews on the back cover said that this is a harvest of utterly sane, consoling, and 
bold, life-affirming insight. I agree and would definitely recommend reading a guide for The Perplexed by E.F. Schumacher. It would be a great addition to your friend list. And because books are our friends, we should choose them carefully. I'm also open to any book recommendations you may have, so let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. Thanks for watching and until next time, namaste.